Hi, this is James from the Professional Services team and this is a short tutorial to show you how to configure a simple hardware import. So here we're using the SupportWorks 76 client and this is the ITSM application. This will apply for only ITSM, um, however the ITSMF, the foundations version, is uh, pretty similar. So what I'm going to do is I will explain some pre-import techniques and steps and then we're going to create two separate imports, one for the main CI information and one for the extended information. We're going to manage our CIs through the staging process and then also we're going to browse the CIs at the end just to make sure that we've got all the relevant information in. So first of all I'm going to show you how you can um, actually import your CIs. There's a few different methods that you can use. I'm going to take you into the SupportWorks server and just go straight to the data import tool which is in SupportWorks server then data import manager. You will see here that you've got several different tabs and opportunities here to bring it in through different methods such as if you've got CI information which is stored directly into a database, let's say a Microsoft SQL database, you can set up an import through here, you can set up a text file import uh, through AD if it's stored on there, some people do have their CI stored on AD, or simply if you can have a Excel import, this is the, a, the demonstration that we're going to be doing today, and these other tabs won't be used for the CI imports. Mainly what we see is these are done through a SQL import or a Excel import. Typical SQL imports would be Centennial or SCCM or some other asset based software. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to explain the staging system. We don't simply just import our CIs directly into the CI table. In ITSM, the CI table is called config underscore item I. The CI table for ITSM foundations is equipment. For foundations, you would directly import straight into the equipment table. However, for ITSM, you go via a staging table called CMDB underscore stage. What we'll see is we will be going into the staging and uh, once we go through the actual import itself, you'll see the benefits of doing this. So the next thing we're going to go into here is we're going to go into the actual categories themselves. So if we switch back to the client, before you build your CMDB, what you will need to do is just configure your categories. So these are just categories or profiles which you can set your hardware or software or network. We're going to go over hardware for this particular type. These are pre-configured types and these are mandatory for when you create your CIs. What you'll have in here is a name category and also you have configuration types. So this can go straight into whether it's a desktop laptop, monitor, server, alternatively you may wish to set these up as subcategories but when you do set up a subcategory sub you have to make sure that you configure configuration types as well. When you create a CI manually which one will do just now, you'll see that it will ask you for a configuration type. So if there isn't anything under hardware or your particular subtype, then nothing will be here. It won't allow you to create it. So what I'm going to do is, in this particular instance, I'm going to use the desktop category type, so the configuration type, sorry. So this is the hardware desktop configuration type. In here it will show you which particular forms you want to use, so you'd know that before I mentioned the extended table. With the forms themselves, they are split into two separate forms. So one which is the main CI form, it will contain things like the description, the actual name of the CI, the primary key, and whether it's active or not whereas the extended form will contain more in-depth information such as manufacturer, model, serial number, these type of things. 
So you can see here in the CI form, it's selecting the CMDB underscore gen hardware, which is just generic hardware form. So that will be um, something specific to hardware rather than software. There's also other ones in here, so you can see software, server, network. When it comes to creating your own configuration types, you may wish to bear that in mind for when you do create your software ones. You do want some fields appearing that, which are related to perhaps license or particular uh, expiry dates. What you will need also against the configuration types is status definitions. Effectively, these are saying whether they're uh, operational or not. Um, you can obviously add in as many as you like here or delete from the list. So I'm not going to go into the other options in terms of availability. Um, this is just a simple hardware import. So I know now that I'm going to select hardware and desktop for when I create RCIs. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. This will allow us to map across our column names and write down obviously all of our CIs that we want to come in. Obviously this could have been an export from a database or a particular area in your network or you could simply just obviously manually create them. Okay so we're in the spreadsheet here and as you can see in the first row it's a list of column names. Now we won't need to actually populate every single one of these as there's only certain information that is actually mandatory. So if we go back into the client very quickly when we create a new CI manually you'll see that it does ask you for the category and there's certain other ones here which is actually mandatory such as description, configuration ID, status, CMDB status. Now there's a couple of other fields as well which we need to fill in to be able to view the CI itself. However, what you may wish to do is if you're not aware of these column names, maybe majority of them do make sense but some of them may not. One thing you may wish to do at this point is actually go back to the help menu and the schema report. This will allow you to go into the main table which is the config item i table. You can simply browse through each one of these column names and just get some form of comment on them and this explains what exactly should be held in here. So you can also see whether it's expecting an integer or some characters. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in some mandatory information first. So we know that we actually need the ID of the config item. So if I go across to the right hand side, you can see a few actually filled in here already. So let's fill in the CK config item. Let's, let's create a couple. So I'm going to go for, let's keep it simple, asset one, asset two, asset three. Let's bring in three. And you can see here the next one, which is also mandatory, which was the type. So it should be in this particular format. So it should be obviously the category and then the configuration type. If you've got subcategories, and obviously bear that in mind, you just simply need to add in another arrow there. So for, the, for these, I'm going to import all as hardware desktop. And you'll see that there's a few other items here which we do need to fill in. One such as the is active baseline. In here, you wish, you'll wish you need to put in yes. It's expecting a varchar rather than a number. In the FK status, which should be FK status level, what this is expecting is the operational. So this is the, if I go back into the categories, so you may wish to keep switching back here. If I go back into the categories, you can see these in here. You've got the status definition, such as operational, faulty, de decommissioned, under repair. So these, these items here will be exactly what's in this particular column. So I'm going to go operational for each one of them. There we go. And you'll notice that CMDB status is also one. So in here, I'm going to say active. 
So where did I get that from? If I go back to our categories, you can see in the right hand column here, you've got active. Usually, obviously, just make sure you keep it the same operational actives. So you can see here, um, FK status level. If I had 40 in there, you'd make sure you have to put 40 in the CMDB status as well. Just make sure they match up. And also a description, because we knew that was mandatory. So I'm just going to copy my test one there. This is a test CI. So you may wish to go through each one of these and just make sure that is unavailable is also no. It's expecting letters there. Is authorized. Yeah, there's several several columns, but you may wish to just go through the actual schema report, just see what exactly each one of them does. And also just if you're doing it straight from a database, just understand where your data is. And if you do need to export it to Excel, just make sure you've got them particular column headings here for each one of the columns itself. Or if you do wish to have a copy of this, I'm more than happy to send it across. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this. And I'm just going to pause the video just while we update this to our server. OK, so that's now been uploaded to our server. So I'm just going to switch across to the server. And you can see in the background there, I've just saved my XLS spreadsheet. Now, if you're bringing this information in through a uh, SQL import, then what you do need to make sure is that you've got a database connection there ready for it. Um, if you're running on a 64-bit system, you would need to go into the Windows and then SysWow folder, SysWow64, and just search for ODBC AD32, run the administrator, in the System DSN tab. Just make sure you add in your relevant driver and this will obviously link to your SQL Server ready for when you import. That's the end of part one. Please join us for part two where we'll look at the import into the main staging area.